Here's today's In Touch devotion. Today's scripture reading begins in verse 26 of Romans chapter 8. Now in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son, so that He would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And these whom He predestined, He also called. And these whom He called, He also justified. And these whom He justified, He also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him over for us all, how will He not also with Him freely give us all things? Who will bring charges against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is He who died, but rather was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or trouble or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We were regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord makes known His love for mankind in many ways. Consider, for example, His providential care and kindness to all humanity, our beautiful planet filled with creation's wonders, and the gift of eternal life to all who trust in Christ as Savior. But have you ever recognized that God also shows love by transforming believers into the image of His Son? Genesis 1 verse 26 tells us that in the beginning God created mankind in His likeness. Though that image was marred when Adam and Eve sinned, God's purposes were not thwarted. Before He had created anything, the plan for mankind's restoration was already in place, as we see in 1 Peter 1 verses 18 through 21. God provided salvation through the sacrifice of His Son on the cross. Everyone who trusts in Jesus is forgiven, spiritually reborn, and adopted into the Heavenly Father's family. The Holy Spirit enters each new believer's life and begins the process of molding the renewed heart and mind into Christ-likeness. And ultimately, the transformation will be completed when we are bodily resurrected and stand before our Heavenly Father in our glorified state. But even before we reach that perfected state, God is glorified through His followers when the likeness of His Son is revealed in our character, conversation, and conduct to those around us.